Welcome everyone. Welcome, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome. I'm going to kick off at five. We still have one minute. So go invite your friends, your family, anybody you think that needs this and then come back. Don't go anywhere, just invite them and then we'll start. Welcome, I'm glad you're here. I'm happy to have you here and our panel needs to be joining us soon. <laughs> I can see that some of you are already sharing your excitement in the comments. Um, that's amazing. So glad to have you too. Hello, Chinemerem. We're glad to have you. Um, hi, Angelique from Kigali. It's good to have you. So hello, everyone. It's five o'clock. Our panelists will be joining us soon. My name is Ifoma, and I am a marketing associate here at Shilit Africa. I will be your host for this evening's webinar. And it's so great to have you all here. I'm currently in Lagos, Nigeria. So I would like you all to introduce yourself and tell me what your name is, what you do, and where you're talking to us from. So yes, Fumi. Hello, Fumi from Nigeria. Hello, Mary Blessing. Mary Blessing, where are you, you know, talking to us from? Hi, Kenny. Hello, Nambula from South Africa. Hello, Ohosa. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Chinaza. Hi, Hilary. Hello, Uju. Wow, it's so nice to see your enthusiasm in the comments. So glad, I'm so glad to have you guys here today. Hi, Jackie from Kenya. Hi, Sandra from Lagos. Kemi from UK. Sia from South Africa, Nancy from Ghana. Hello, everyone. Hello, Bolu from Canada. Oh, wow. Our guest is here. Hello, everyone. Hello, Florence. Hi. It's so Hi. nice to meet you. Hello. Nice I'm to just inviting everyone in the comments, in the chat box. They are telling us their names and where they are, um, you know, talking to us from. So it's so exciting. Okay. That's it with us from all around. <laughs> so yeah, I'm glad to see that everyone is pumped for today's session. So for the next two to three minutes, wait for more people to join in and then we'll keep, kick off at 5.05. So for now, if you want to invite a friend, if you want to send this link to a friend on WhatsApp, you want to post it on Twitter, feel free to do so. You want to share it on Facebook, Anyone you think that um, would really um, appreciate this or get a lot from this, you should invite them because this is going to be amazing. So yeah, hello everyone. Hello, Oluwa Kayomide. Hello, Emerald from Joss. How is everyone doing today? Tomorrow is Friday and the weekend is upon us. The end of the month is upon us and our salaries will soon be entering our accounts. <laughs> I hope you guys are excited. <laughs> I hope you guys are excited. Wow. Nepa just did what they know how to do best. So. Uh oh. Hi, Kemi. You're super excited. Um, so am I. I'm super excited <laughs> to be here. Hmm. Hi, everyone. So I'm still here. Don't mind that Nepa, you know, wanted to steal my shine, but my shine is going to be back because someone is turning on the gen. So I'm <laughs> sure if you can relate, please let me know if this has ever happened to you before. <laughs> you can so relate, unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> yes, the video will be available. Yes, we're recording the session, so you'll be able to access it after. So, yes. 
So yes, but we're going to be getting our salary soon. I hope we're planning to invest this money that we're getting soon. I hope this money is going to be, you know, put away for good use. And we're not going to spend it all on shawarma and you know, <laughs> ice cream and cold stone. <laughs> and the whole nine. Interesting. Okay, I'm back. Yes. So Yay, hello everyone. <laughs> I'm back just in time. So hello everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Like I said before, I'm Ifoma, a marketing associate here at Shilit Africa. And today we're going to be talking all about stocks. Uh, we have the amazing Florence Warikam joining us today. She is a wealth management um, person from FSDH, and she's going to be teaching us right now. I'm so excited because I'm a novice when it comes to stocks. So I'm in the same boat with you know most people here. You might even know more than me. So I'm so glad she's joining us today, and she's going to be telling us all about stocks, teaching us why it's important for us to you know know about investing, learn more about it, and get into it. So I'll be giving the floor to her. She's the expert here. So everybody, just put clapping emojis in the comments if you're excited for this session right now. Don't <laughs> clapping emojis because it's going to be that great so yeah so hello everyone what's you <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Depending on the part of the world that you're from, uh, I'm so excited to be here and to be speaking to you on um, this very topic that is going to make help us to make money, you know, and build wealth and grow our portfolio. Uh, my name is Florence Warikam, as she has introduced me already, um, and I hope we're all doing fine, dealing well with the um, corona uh, pandemic. I hope it's not too bad over there, wherever it is that we're coming from. I hope that work is not too stressful. I hope we're all good and fine. So um, without wasting too much time, we'll just start. So I'll just be sharing my screen. And then if you have questions, of course, you can um, put it in the comment box or you can raise up your hand if you want to speak directly and then Ifoma will coordinate that. So uh, let me do that. Let me share my screen. So you please let me know if you can see my screen. Can everybody see my screen, please? Okay, if I'm, if you could just um, speak up, speak so that I know. Well, I don't want to just I can see your screen right now. Okay, you can't see it right now. Okay. okay. How about now? Can you see my screen now? Yes, I can see your screen now. I can see it now. Okay, okay. So I guess yeah. that means everybody can see yeah. my screen. All right, if you're just coming in, welcome. Uh, I'll, I'll, it's gonna be a quick session so that we can get to do other things. Um, so my name is Florence Warikam. Like I said, I'll be taking us all on a beginner's guide to investing in stocks. Uh, a quick uh, introduction about me so that I'm not like a stranger. My name is Florence Warikam. I have an MBA from University of Lagos. I have a BSE from um, Amadou Bello University, Zaria. Um, that's a BSE in accounting. And I am actually a chartered accountant in Nigeria. They, um, the, of the one of the bodies, the chartered institutions is the is called ICANN, that's Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. Um, so I am a member. And then so Hello. 
can everyone hear her? Please let me know in the chat box if you can hear her. Okay, seems like her connection is failing for a bit. Oh, wow. But can you see what is on the screen, though? You can still see her screen, right? Okay, your connection was breaking for a bit, so I guess they could not hear you for a bit. Oh, apologies. I hope you can hear me better now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I was just giving a brief introduction about myself. I said my name is Florence Waricam. I have an MBA from University of Lagos, Nigeria. Um, I did my BSc in um, uh, accounting from Amadou Bello University, Zaria. I am quite passionate about finance, if that's not obvious already, um, particularly investments. I love to educate people on how they can build wealth, you know, because I, when I got into the industry, I realized that there was a huge knowledge gap. A lot of people don't really know what to do with their money. They just keep the money in the banks and they don't really know how to invest and what it is to invest, what it is that they can invest in, what options are there that are available to them. So I'm really quite um, passionate about growing wealth and educating people on that. I said also that I'm a chartered accountant in Nigeria, the um, body here for uh, the Republic uh, Institute for Chartered Accountants. One of them is called ICANN, that's the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, I'm a member. Uh, currently, I work as a portfolio manager at FSDH Asset Management here in Nigeria. That is FSDH is First Securities Discount House. Um, I'm a portfolio manager there. And then on as my hobbies, I love watching movies. I love theater arts. You know, that seems like, you know, two polar opposites between finance and that. But yeah, it's really what I love. I actually love telling stories. So um, it's almost like I have a dual personality because, you know, in the people around the circles of theater arts, they can't believe that I'm a finance professional and finance around my finance um, peeps. They can't believe that I'm involved in those in both. So I don't know, I guess, live your life and be happy. <laughs> That's yes. the lesson in all of this. So would um, just move, we'll dive right into it. First and foremost, what are stocks, right? You hear the word stock stocks. Maybe you already have an idea on what that means, or maybe you don't know what it means. If you already have an idea, please be patient with us. This is a beginner's class, so we're going to start everything from the beginning and really try to make sure people have the basics. Um, first of all, I like to even distinguish between what stocks are and shares. You hear stocks and you hear shares, and you're wondering, is it the same thing? Oh, should I say stocks here or should I say shares? Okay, sh stocks are is just a general term, you know general term for shares. So if you have um, stocks, if you have um, shares in different companies, you say um, stocks, or you, if you just want to talk about stock, like the general in different various companies, you say use stocks. But if you're talking about a particular company, you say shares. So I have shares in this company. So that's what it means. Before I move on, in case I interchange them and you know, you have that question on your mind. So first and foremost, stocks are securities that represent ownership in a corporation, right? Like the way they say a cell is the smallest unit, you know, in a body, stocks or shares are actually the smallest unit in a corporation. You know, um, if you have a piece of pie or pizza or whatever, how, how when it's been shared into different pieces, you know, every unit of that particular piece of cake or a piece of pie or you know it's it's what you can be used to explain is what you can you use to liken to stocks or shares so you know if there's a corporation and then the corporation is divided into different um, subunits into this uh, based on its assets and you know the value of that Seems like her connection has stopped. That's what we call um, stocks. So that's what we call shares. Yeah. Okay. So um, so it basically just um, is used to represent an ownership um, share in a corporation. So if I have one piece of that pie, so that is my own pie. Uh, that's my that's my, my that's my own piece of the entire pie. So we have a, a pie, and then I have one piece that's. So that, that one piece represents my the representation of my own share in the entire pie. 
Do we, do we understand? So because of that ownership, that's why stocks is also always interchanged with equity. Equity is ownership, right? So um, having um, an ownership share in a corporation, it entitles the owner of that stock or the share or the owner of the share to a proportion of the corporation's assets and profits. So remember I said that, you know, breaking down the assets and the total worth of the company into monetary systems, the smallest unit is what is can be likened to shares. So um, corporations actually use um, shares to or stocks to raise funds to operate their business. You know, um, if I'm just starting out in a new company, I want to start out to raise some funds for my I need capital for my business, I would go to the um, stock exchange and then I would go to the public. Of course, there's a whole procedure about how you can get, get listed on the stock exchange, go to the public and say, okay, hey, please buy my shares. Um, I am selling a unit of share at so and so price. So it's the corporations use it as a way of raising money. You know, it's a cheaper alternative to raising money, although uh, unlike going to the bank where you'll be paid in, where you have to pay interest and all of that. So they use it to um, raise funds either the, at the first um, at the first offer, at the first time you're coming onto the stock exchange. That's the initial public offer. They call it IPO. Or if you, you, have, you have already been in the public, uh, in the stock exchange and you want to raise additional shares, let's say you want to expand as a company, you want to do more, you want to open a new division, you may also come to the stock exchange, you may also um, go, to go public and ask people to investors to invest in your funds. So that's, the use. that's, why, that's why companies actually issue stocks, basically, to raise funds, right? So if you buy, let's say, the... The stocks, a company stocks um, is being measured by the, um, the, the ownership is of, of a company stock is being measured by the proportion of the um, total share which you, you, you have, which belongs to you. If a company has like 100,000 shares and you have 10,000 shares or 1,000 shares, that means that you own 1% of the company, right? Um, an investor may have stocks in either private or public company. I talked about going um, to the stock exchange. Stock exchange that for companies that want to go public, that's where you hear the Nigerian stock exchange. But some, there's, there are some companies that have not gone public, but you know they still have um, shareholders. And those companies are private companies. It's just a private thing. Um, the shareholders are actually private. They don't go public. They don't go to the Nigerian stock exchange. So stocks may be public, may, you may have stocks for a public company or a private company. I mentioned it already, the first time a company issues shares to the public is called the initial public offering. And after that, after the first initial public offering, um, stockholders, last you and I, let's say a, a new company, like if Oma is, has a new company now, she's going to the market for the first time. The first time she gets to the market is called the initial public offering. After she goes to the market, let's say I buy, I partake in her stocks and I buy some stocks from her, if I, I could decide to sell it at any point in time, still on the stock exchange. So I can decide to resell, you know, and that's when, that's when you have the trading going on on the Nigerian stock exchange. These are people, these are shareholders that have actually bought already, they have already bought it, um, bought shares from a particular company at the initial um, offering. And then they may choose to hold it to maturity to enjoy the benefits, or they may they may choose to hold it, 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 um, the the stock and keep enjoying the benefits like dividends and all of that, or they may choose to just sell it off. So when the trading that goes on in the stock exchange is actually mostly um, shareholders that have already bought shares, either buying or selling the shares that have already been issued. Okay, that's what goes on in the public. Um, in on the stock exchange in Nigeria, what we, we call it Nigerian stock exchange, New York stock exchange for, for um, in America and all of that. So trading goes on. Can everybody hear me, please? I hope, uh, okay, please I hope let us know if you can hear her in the chat box. If you have any questions, please put it in the Q and A box, and they will be answered. So if you have any questions so far, please put it in the Q and A box. 
and your questions will be answered. But let us know that you're enjoying the session so far. I'm learning a lot, which is why I'm like not even <laughs> talking, but I'm learning a lot and I'm glad to be here. So let us know how excited you are, you know, put some emojis, you know, dance around <laughs> in the chat box. Yeah, so we we'll to continue now. <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, I hope I'm not moving too fast, but well, we will have the opportunity to ask questions if we do have any questions. Um, so still on stocks, what are they? Um, there are two types of stocks. Because this is a beginner's class, I won't delve too much into it, but we'll just talk about basically the two types of stocks. So we have the common stock and we have a preferred stock. In case you're hearing um, common shares, what does that mean? Preferred shares, what does that mean? So stocks are usually divided, they are actually, they there are usually two. In a company may choose to issue shares as a preferred stock. What that means is that the preferred shareholder would be given dividends first before the common shareholder. And then also, if there is any, um, any let's say the company is, 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 going to, is, is going to get liquidated, if, it, if the company is broke, it's, it's bankrupt, and it has to sell off its assets, the, pref the preferred shareholder will be settled first before the ordinary shareholder. So those are the difference between the ordinary shares and the preferred shares. So most times what's on offer actually is actually the ordinary shares. The advantage of the um, holding an ordinary share, you know, being an ordinary shareholder is that you can vote, you know, whenever the corporation is having its annual general, general meeting. So your vote, your voting can be able to influence some of the high level decisions that happen in the, in the company, for instance, the electing new board members, you know, they're making one or two, whatever, high level decisions, not day-to-day -day management decisions. Management is, you know, being run by someone else. As shareholder, your own, um, your own part is to make decisions, to help make, um, to vote on making major high level decisions. So those are the advantages of, um, of um, being a common shareholder. So also if the company is, is um, maybe wants to acquire another company, if it wants to merge with another corporation, you also have, can vote if there's a takeover, all those high level um, decisions, that's where you get to you know, have a say. Preferred shareholders do not have that, you know, but then the preferred shareholders are entitled to receive dividends you know, before the, sometimes the preferred shareholders, there's a minimum percentage of dividends that they are supposed to receive every time, you know, a company makes profit. So those are the two major differences between a preferred shareholder and a common shareholder. So stocks are generally a good investment option for investors uh, because um, in the long run, they've been seen, you know, it has been proven that they actually pre pre present higher return than any other investment option. Whether you're talking about fixed income, by fixed income, I mean any investment that you would, you, where you make an investment and you, you would expect in a particular percentage of your investment um, after a period of time. It could be fixed deposits, it could be treasury bills, it could be um, um, bonds, federal government bonds, because in Nigeria here, we, there's a differentiation between treasury bills and bonds in America is just bonds. So, but then, yeah, basically those are fixed income. Fixed income is any kind of investment where there's a fixed return. So, um, the owning shares or shares of stocks um, are actually better over time, over the long run, they actually provide better yields than all the other investments. Now, what are the benefits and risks of investing in stocks? Now, the benefits of investing in stocks, uh, you know, you can be broken down into many, 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 you know, different advantages. But the two, but they are all, um, they can be all broadly classified into two. Number one is capital appreciation. Number two is income generation. I'll explain what that means. So capital appreciation means, um, it means that, means that um, just as the name is the capital appreciating, that means the value of your investment appreciating over time, increasing over time. And, you know, things like this have, have, have been seen to um, beat inflation, for instance, you know, so that's where we're talking about how um, stocks can be a, um, a better yielding investment than a fixed income. Because 
you know, where um, you, you are investing in maybe fixed deposits and they'll tell you um, 4%, uh, rates are really low in Nigeria right now, 4% on your investment, um, your, tre your treasury bills. Um, but for, for stocks or for shares, you know, if your, the value of the share can actually increase the a, a, a price of the stock that you bought for maybe um, 25 Naira today can actually be um, 35 Naira or 50 Naira um, in next month or in six months down the line. And that's already a 100% increase. So that is the major advantage of stocks or shares, owning stocks. There's, there's capital appreciation, right? So when the, cap, the, the, the price of a share appreciates, it gives you the investor the opportunity to sell. Remember we talked about reselling um, to, is still in the market and then you get your gain, you know, and all of that. The second um, order benefit is uh, income generation. Most, um, the, a lot of stocks, not most, a lot of stocks actually pay dividends. We talked about dividends. Dividends are um, a percentage of a company's earnings which it shares to its, you know, shareholders, you know. So the, there are some companies that have been known to consistently pay dividends. You know the time when they are expecting dividend, they've been known, like historically. So that can provide income gener income for you, where you know that, okay, I'm going to be, it's another form of income, where you know that there's a certain amount of money hitting my bank account, depending on the amount of shares that I own. So that is another way in which you can earn money or, or, or shares, owning shares can be beneficial. Now we're going to talk about the risk. The risk of, own, of, of stocks is that, or owning stocks is that, um, they may, prices of the stocks can also go down as well. Just the same way the prices can actually go up, it can also go down, you know, so it fluctuates. Depending on forces of market, um, forces of supply and demand in the market. What do I mean by that? Remember that there's a market where stocks have been traded at this stock exchange, right? So just like any commodity, when there's a high demand of a particular commodity, let's say people are rushing to buy um, Zenith Bank sh um, shares now, for instance, if there's a high demand, because there's that high demand on it, the price will keep, there is a higher, you know, people, more people want it than people that are willing to sell it. So naturally the price will be going appreciating. And if at a particular point in time, people are not, yeah, there's more, more people are willing to dispose of those shares or sell of those shares than to those who are willing to buy it, then definitely the price would actually come down, go down because people are willing to sell. So the forces of market, uh, of, of the market, that is forces of, demand and supply would actually can actually have an influence on the um, price of the stock. Also, the general economic um, performance also can actually have a market sentiment and have, have an effect on the price. If, if the investors do not believe that the company is going to make money or if the investors do not even believe in the economy, then um, there, there is a tendency that they will want to pull out of the market. For instance, last year, um, sometime around February, March, when the Corona, you know, pandemic hit, you know, hit um, the world, people became investors became skeptical and they began to lose confidence in the stock market. Um, and then a lot of foreign investors began to pull out of the Nigerian stock um, market, and as a result, the prices of the stocks went down. You know, so those are the other reasons. If macroeconomic conditions can also influence. Um, you know, the performance of the price of a stock. So it is actually natural when you see that the prices of stocks, stocks the stock market generally always goes in, cyclic, in a cycle. It actually has a cycle, the cyclical time. Sometimes there'll be a demand for it. People will be going in and then the price will be appreciated and other times it will go down, you know. And then there are also periodic times also when people would, um, when you find out that there's an appreciation in the market, you know. From you know, so a lot of times, where, especially where the market is being dominated by foreign investors, in the beginning, around January, a lot of foreign investors will come into the market, and then you know, so there will be a lot of demand for shares. And then around and December, when companies are beginning to wind down, they're beginning to close their books, they're beginning to you know, 
So the most time you see a lot of withdrawal, you know, coming out. People are withdrawing from the market because they are trying to close their books. They are trying to see how much profit they've made and all of that. This is not a rule book, right? There are different conditions, and that's why you have your professional stock booker to actually guide you. I'm just letting us know some of the factors that actually could influence. Um, the stock market and the reason why you see, oh, after you open the news, the papers today, you see that, oh, the stock markets are doing high investors gain this, or you open another market, you see, oh, investors lost so and so price. So I'm just making us understand the reason why there are those fluctuations and the why there are those cyclical movements in the market. So also okay. another reason is that, okay. So it's not always advisable to just sell your stocks immediately the market starts to fluctuate. Like, let me say you put in this amount and today you notice that, okay, it's, let me say 100,000, tomorrow is 90,000. You're like, hey, let me go sell my stock so I don't want to hala. So it's not always advisable to do that. It's not, actually. It's not. We're going to be talking about that uh, much later. But, you know, generally in the market, you buy when the prices are low and then you buy low and you sell high. So, you know, when people are rushing out, except if you, that's why you need a professional anyway. You can consult with professionals, speak with them and, and all of that. The truth is that it's just like what you rightly said. You only materialize your loss when you actually decide to sell at a time when the price is low, right? If, um, let's say you bought um, Zenith Bank at maybe 20 Naira or 25 Naira, or maybe 29 Naira, so I think that's about how much it's going for now. And then tomorrow, you now hear that Zenith Bank, oh, the price is now um, 25 Naira. Ah, you, you now go, <laughs> let me redraw my style. I don't want my money to finish. You now redraw it. It was an on. It was even though technically on paper it's like oh my money my money I, I lost yeah. funds. You only actually lose your funds when you actually decide to sell at a lower price because tomorrow the price may also, also go up again. So don't be too quick. Don't be too quick to rush to either buy or sell. You know don't do panic rushing. The, the panic selling. Don't do panic selling. Panic selling is a no no. So that's why before you even choose stock, which I'll be talking to us about how you can pick some stocks, you would make sure you evaluate a lot of things. You look at the fundamentals. And when you're pretty confident as to how and why you bought those, those, those shares, and you hear that there is uh, maybe a fluctuation in the market and all of that, you will not be easily phased. You will not be easily rattled by, oh, there's now the price, there's a decline in the market. So that one quickly sell. If you actually are confident and you know um, the kind of stocks that you have bought, you will not be easily phased, especially when you know the reason why some of this fluctuation happens. You know, sometimes um, the price of a stock will be appreciating when it's time for the company to pay dividend. So investors will watch it and they will be like, oh, this company usually pays dividends around this time. I want to take in part in this dividend. So I will quickly go and buy. When I buy, the price will start increasing. And then after the dividend, people that are just there for the dividend, which is normal, people invest, pe investors invest for different reasons. An investor may choose to um, sell. And then you are seeing that, oh, it's selling. Ah, it was um, 35 Naira. Now it's 30 Naira. Without really understanding why they are selling, you now say, me too, I want to sell. And then you will have just you know, made a mistake. So it's good to understand the market very well. Yes, exactly. So another risk is that um, a company can a company may go bankrupt and you know it has to liquidate its assets and the common stockholders, like I mentioned earlier, they are the last to receive, you know, last in line to share in the proceeds. So that's another risk. A company can go down. You know, you never can tell. A company can go down, and if it goes down, there goes your funds if you're a com common um, shareholder. Um, yeah. So let's talk about if stocks are good for you. Are stocks good for you? Well, I would say yes, but then let's go further. Now, stocks are good for you if you are not risk adverse. Remember, we just talked about the cyclical motion of um, the cyclical pattern of shares. So if you're somebody that, hey, you don't like anyone coming, I mean, touching your money, your 100 naira that you left, or 100 pounds or whatever, is how you want to keep seeing it. Yeah, You don't want anything to go down, you know, then you, you, you may have, may want to um, 
either you get more educated like we are doing now to understand the reason why um, maybe there's a fluctuation in the price or you may not just invest so much of your um, funds or your net worth into shares knowing that you know it fluct the price fluctuates so yeah, you should, if you're somebody that is very risk adverse, risk adverse means that you are so against risk. You don't like anything risk. You don't take risk at all. You don't like risk. Then, you know, it may not be so good for you. And then shares are actually good for you if you are young. You know, I talked about capital appreciation. Some of this capital appreciation, it happens over a long period of time. And especially as a young person, you have more, um, more, 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 um, should I say more bandwidth to be able to, because it's, there's a little bit of risk involved as a young person, you can afford to take those risks. And I'm, I know that, you know, we're all young here. Um, so it, stocks are actually good for you as a young person. You should start investing in stocks, really. Um, there's, there's a whole, you have a longer period of time in which you can recover, the, you, you, you can wait for the market to recover from any downturn that it has. So because of that, then, you know, it, it's good for you. It's good to, there's a rule of thumb that says that um, whatever your age is, you subtract 120, you subtract your age from 120 and whatever you get, that would be the percentage of your net worth that should be invested in stocks. So let's say maybe you're 25 years old. <laughs> if you're 25 years old, you would 120 minus 25, that's 95. So 95% of your net worth should be in stocks. So you just start, and then it's a gradual thing. It's not, you don't, you don't feel intimidated. Oh, I have to have so many stocks. Of course, you, it's something that you build up over time. The Warren Buffett started, I'm sure we all heard of him. He started investing from an early age. A lot of the wealthy people that we have today, they started investing from an early age. It was a gradual thing. They kept on investing a little investment here. Oh, the market, the prices are low now. Okay, let me just invest in this market. Let me, and that's how you gradually build your net worth, right? Okay. Also, um, stocks are a good investment option if you are not constrained by time. What do I mean by that? You know, I, uh, you, if you are someone that maybe you have a spare cash, maybe you have a spare 1,000 naira or 1,000, whatever currency that you use. And then um, you say, I, you actually know that you need this 1,000 naira to pay your rent, or you need it for any particular, maybe there's a particular um, expense or you know, a fee that you need to pay at a, at a certain month, maybe by June this year. That's not the time to start investing that your 1,000 naira in stocks, right? Because the market, like I said, it goes in circles and then it's also unpredictable. You cannot tell. You know, you, you can. There are, there are many indicators that will be able to forecast and say this and that. But then, it's no, there's no crystal ball, really. You know, you can make educated and calculated risk, but it's not the time for you to maybe use your rent money or something that you know you have a bill to pay at a particular moment in time, and you want to say, I want to exit the market at, or, or I want to exit the market on the 12th of June, 2021. No, it doesn't work that way. You know, you, sh you, you should have other funds that will cover those basics, you know. Um, yeah, so if you want to make that kind, that's why fixed income investments are available. So you would invest in that fixed income. You know, fixed income is targeted. Your fixed deposit in 30 days. This is how much you see. So those are for those kind of expenses. Those are the kind of investments that you go for. Stocks. We're looking at medium to long term, right? Medium, not necessarily long term. Before, it's possible that even in the short term, you know, you already getting like in, um, in the Nigerian stock market, for instance, January alone there was five percent um, increase. So people that the five percent appreciation in the value, their net value. So people that they are, they are the people that um, at the beginning of the year, they, their stocks were um, maybe they were like there was like ten naira per share. They they already had a, a five percent increase, which fixed income can't promise you. So it's possible to actually have those returns in the short term, but don't use that to plan. You know, if you know that you have investor investments at a particular time. Now, next, we we're moving to how to pick stocks. How do you pick stocks? How do you know which stocks to pick? Which one? There's so many stocks in the market. What do you look out for? Number one, you look out for the company's fundamentals. What do I mean? 
by the company's fundamentals. We want to take a look, a look at the company's directors, what the kind of directors that the company ha that the company has. Are they um, incredible people? Are they people with integrity? You know, do they have the wealth of experience? Are they, have they been, you know, have they been on, in this market and this game for a long time? Do they have the financial muscle? How what their finances like? What their revenue like? Those are the kind of things that you would look at, you know, at, you know, have they, have they been seen and proven to stand the test of time? You know, if it's a good company, those are the, 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 the you know, those are, those are the things you're going to look at before you invest in, you know, the business that the company is involved in, how thriving is that, how, how thriving is it? You don't make, you don't make an investment decision based on a sentiment. Oh, I like this person, so I will invest. No, it doesn't work that way. You know, you have to find out whether it's a profitable investment, whether the best investment business is doing well. You know, look at a company um, that you know that their products, no matter what happens in the economy, people would always buy their products because maybe their products are like consumer goods, like things that people would always need. You know, those are the kind of things that you want to be looking at. Then you also look at the liquidity of the of company shares. What I mean by that is that there are some companies that um, if you look at, if you actually check the NSA, okay, so um, the Nigerian stock exchange for those who living in Nigeria, for any, for regardless of where you're living in, just check the website of your stock exchange. If you check the website of your stock exchange, if you go to equities, from equities, it will tell, if you would always see details of the, of the, of the shares that were traded every day, every day, at least every working day, Mondays to Fridays. And from that, you'll be able to, you can even gauge the number of trades that were going, that, you know, that have, that, and the number of trades. What I mean by trades is the buying and selling people, who are, how many people bought or sold those particular shares. So a, a company's shares is liquid when um, there's a lot of demand, either there's a lot of buying activity or selling activity. Or for those kind of shares, there's people are always either buying or selling. It's good to look to, to pick out to to look out for that when you're buying a share because in case you want to leave the market, you know you don't want to be stuck. Oh, I want to sell this and then nobody's buying it. You or you have to wait, you know. So those if if you buy shares of a company that if I want to dispose, if I want to exit the market now, I can just quickly exit the market. So the company shares are actually liquid. It's a lot of buying and selling activity that goes on. Then also you may also want to look at. A company that has a big dividend paying history. I mentioned that some companies that would that have been known, you know, to keep paying dividends at a um, every year. You can go invest in that if you're looking into income generation, you want a certain amount of money to be coming in. So a good thing to do when when the dividend comes in, sometimes it may be small, it may look small to you because maybe you started small. Of course, the dividend will only be in proportion with the amount of money you have invested, and you're just looking at ah, this one. Just invest it back. Use the dividend to buy more stocks. That's a good way to grow your wealth, you know, rather than allowing it to be in your savings account and then you just use it and you're just like, I've been having this share. I don't even know what is happening, you know. So that's how you build your wealth, really. Then also, you the pricing is also very important. Remember, I told you about the cyclical pattern of stocks. Don't go entering into the market when the prices are high you enter into the market when it's low you buy low you sell high so when the ma market um, is, is actually low or at least in the price is reasonable you know that's when you go in it's not the time when you're hearing oh prices are so high that's when you now start going into the market it's not advisable to do that it's better to buy when it's at least low or average or low you know buy go in and then so that your cost so it, it helps with your profit it means that you don't even the price of the stock doesn't have to appreciate so much before you can easily exit and make your profit but if you go high then you may not you may not be stuck because you're waiting for it to go even higher you know so it's very good and then diversify it's very important to diversify if you're choosing your stocks so as you build your portfolio let's say you invest you start out with the banking sector you invest in banking and all of that. As you keep on increasing your wealth, you can now decide to go to, uh, or maybe let me go to ICT, that's telecommunications and you know, move to that sector. When you buy some, oh, let me buy uh, uh, industrial goods or look at some, you know, maybe Dangote, I don't know, any share that you just wanna, it's good to diversify. So when you're di you're diversifying helps because 
you know, there are different things that can affect um, an industry when, when, it, when maybe the banking shares are going down, you know, a particular point in time, then the other shares that you have in other industries may be thriving, you know, maybe the banking industry is not doing well, but this time but it's actually helping the, the consumer industry is actually thriving. Maybe yeah, the banking share is not doing well, but the um, ICT, the telecommunications is actually doing great. So it helps to even out your, and minimize your loss. That's what that does, okay? Um, so also focus on the long-term. When you're buying shares, don't just focus on the short term. Don't just focus on um, something that will just, you know, it make quick money. I, stocks are not for you if you are looking to make quick money. If you are looking to double your money, that it's going to happen. It's one of the things that happen. But if that is your mentality, that's what you're thinking, you'll be very disappointed. It's just for building wealth over time. That's what stocks are for. Being. I invest in stocks. You may decide to, you, you can invest in stocks by opening an account with a broker. You know, there's so many stock broking firms. You want to look for a, a credible one. You go to the Securities and Exchange Commission. That's the, those the guys that um, have regulate the, the um, different investors, the different um they are basically the regulatory body for people that play in the stock market. You can look out for um, registered or, you know, verified stock broking houses, you know, you check it there, there are plenty of them, you can pick one, or you can still make some inquiries, make your inquiries, which stock broking house do I want to invest in? And some that one that has a good reputation, pick one out, open an account with them, they would help you to start buying. You can buy your stocks and sell through them. You can also invest through um, vehicles or funds or pooled investment options like a um, mutual fund or ETF. There are many mutual funds that is look for a good company that has mutual funds. You can pick one and buy it. So the advantage of mutual funds is, you know, if investing through a mutual fund is that you are now investing to an already diversified portfolio. Most times those um, pooled investment options, they, what they do is that they take funds from different individuals and then sum it all up and then use it to invest, you know. And that, what, that helps is that it, it, what that helps is that you will be able to enjoy higher returns than if you were investing as an individual. However, you know, when then when you want to exit, you just sell units of those investments, just sell it and then go up. But if you want to have like stocks in your own name, you know, that's where you can now buy your individual stocks so that you know that you are, you are a shareholder in a particular company, you could buy it in, as an individual or you could use um, those investment or, um, options. Wow. And depending on part of the country, you have um, some robo investors and all of that, that you, where you can actually um, just buy your shares through those options. And uh, that's it, will be all. I can't believe we're done already. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so we have a lot of questions in the QA box. A lot of people are dying to ask their questions about stocks, and I'm on the boat too, because from what I understand, <laughs> Investing is like planting. So you put seeds in the ground and you don't expect fruits to come out the next day. You have to be patient. You have to take the risk. You have to, you know, examine the soil well. You have to water it. You have to be watchful to make sure that, you know, your, your plants will grow. So I like plants. So that was a good analogy for me. And I mean, I'll be, I'll be reading more about it, but I'm so glad to have you here. I'm sure everyone here is glad to have you. I can see in the chat box, they're saying it's interesting. This is so awesome. Thank you so much. So yeah, 33 questions in the chat box. Um, some of them are the same questions, but a lot of them are different. Okay. Someone asked, how can I invest in companies that haven't gone public? Oh, okay. So thank you very much for that question. So companies that haven't gone public, usually they look for institutional investors. You know, they already have, the reason why they didn't go public is maybe they already have some big investors that are going to 
invest, you know, put in a whole lot of money. So usually closed door meeting, they are select investors that would present their case and then people would invest. It's not, it's not something that is open to public, actually, you know, mm -hmm. for companies that are not there. So that's why um, those are, they are not open to public. So they are closed, they are private investors. And most times those are institutional investors that maybe have a lot of funds. So that's how you can actually invest if you are an institutional investor most times, except if maybe it's your brother or your cousin that wants to invest, that's how you can also private that or not go public, you invest that person. But most times uh, private companies are usually backed with, uh, backed by big companies if they want to go, um, mm. if they want to, if they are seeking investors. Mm. Yeah. Someone asks, are there equity crowdfunding platforms for startups in Africa? Not that I know of now. Not that I know of what they are, what we have now in are uh, actually just um, equity funds. You know, we talked about mutual funds. So that's that's an that equity fund too. Um, that basically has a majority of their portfolio, percentage of their portfolio invested in equities. Um, yeah, we've um, explained what those funds do. Pool, take a pool of um, investments from of, or funds from different investors and use it to invest. And then whatsoever the gain of, you know, or increase um, profit on those investments are the individual units investors. Those funds are called units. Now, if you, if you are, if you buy shares of a fund, it's your unit holder, not the shareholder. So those units, whatever appreciation, whatever gains be shared to the unit holder. Okay. Is there a set quota to the number of shares a company can issue at IPO or are companies free to decide for themselves? Okay, so there's a whole process of um of of um actually, you know, before you even get to the point where you'd be able to do an IPO, um the regulatory body SEC. NSC would have to check your books and check a lot of things, whether you have that. So yes, there may be some form of some, some um, restrictions as to the amount and uh, how much you can actually invest. Yes, because they, they are, is, you're being regulated. Yeah. Mm, okay. Um, someone said, I read in a financial publication that 1,000 Naira can be invested in stock. How true is this? Yes, it's possible for one. 1,000 naira to be invested in stocks, very possible because, uh, I mean, how much is the, the price of an average stock? 20 naira, even the ones that are expensive, maybe 100, 100 and something naira. Yes, um, um, Nestle goes for 104, it's currently going for 1,400 naira. I, I think that Nestle is the highest um, stock in the market right now, but you can buy a whole, whole many other shares with your 1,000 naira. But it depends on the stock broking um, companies. So most times um, there's a minimum for, for stock broking companies, there's a minimum opening amount, you know. But then I think things are getting more competitive now. So it's possible for those stock broking um, companies to, especially for, uh, in student environments and all that, even say, you know what, just open for free, just start with your 1,000 naira. So yeah, with 1,000 naira, you can buy a lot of shares, you can buy your 10 stocks if you like, you can buy. So that's how you start building your wealth. You have a 1,000 naira here. You buy 10 stocks next week you have another free 1000 instead of using it to buy shawarma you buy more stocks just make sure you are buying good stocks and all of that and that's how you just keep building your portfolio tomorrow you now hear ah this stock i bought for uh 25 naira ah, it's selling for 30 naira you might not choose that okay should i sell it okay let me sell it or maybe say no let me wait I feel like it. i'm an investor now ah, my money has <laughs> That's, that's so true. Because I'm like, if you even have children that you want to teach about investing, it's a good way to start them off. Like, okay, you saved your lunch money. Now there's a way for you to make not like more money legally and teach them patience too. So they can invest 1,000, 2,000 with time. I mean, to grow, they learn more from practically doing it. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then, okay. Definitely, there's definitely a sense of accomplishment. So I'm a shareholder. Yeah. See, I'm part owner of this company. Yeah, yeah. it's true. 
you know, and it helps. The more, yeah, you get you get rewarded, you feel satisfaction, you feel happy with yourself, you feel productive. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Onyinye asks, in Nigeria, for instance, is it possible for my capital to appreciate past the rate of inflation? Like at the rate of inflation correct currently, is it actually possible to get value that is not depreciated in the long run? Very possible. Very possible. As a matter of fact, Nigerian stock exchange here. If you don't keep it, as at the beginning of the year, you know, the prices of the average share, um, average share price had increased uh, by the end of the year, the average that it had increased by 50%, 50.2%. That was Nigerian stock market actually performed, I think it was the best in the world. Uh, Nigerian stock exchange the performance last year. So yeah, it's an easy way for you to get um, to beat inflation. We talked about it. Yeah. Investing in shares is a good way for you to um, beat inflation. Yeah, someone says, can you give us names of the companies that pay dividend? Names of what? Companies that pay dividend. I didn't get that. Names of what pay? Companies that pay dividend. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, sure. Um, we, uh, companies that pay dividend regularly. Um, da, um, we have Dangote. We Dangote Cement. Um, then we have also um, Zenith. The banks also pay dividend. Zenith Bank, UBA, um, GT Bank, those First Bank also. You know they pay. They've been. They've paid dividend consistently for some time now. So you can just almost expect or almost predict that okay they're going to pay dividend as long as they make a profit mm. yeah okay debbie asks there's a recent increase in trading stocks can you help us outline the difference between this and investing which is more profitable there's a recent i didn't get the question there's a recent increase in day trading stocks day trading okay. stocks can you help us outline the differences between this and investing? Which one is more profitable? Maybe she needs to explain to me what day trading stocks means. I'm not sure I understand. Okay, so day Debbie, trading. if you're still here with us, please explain in the chat box what day trading stocks are so we can address your question properly. Um, so, uh, okay. Do dividends apply to those who, okay, this is still a day trading question. So if you ask any question about day trading, please um, add, like clarify in the comments so that we can answer your question. Yeah. Now, um, Tori asks, how can you differentiate between a Ponzi scheme and a real investment? Isn't everything about taking risks? Okay. The question, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So you said I should differentiate between a Ponzi scheme and a real invest investment. Isn't everything about what? How, um, I think everything is about taking risks. So she's saying, how do you oh, differentiate? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, since okay. it's all about risks. Well, how do you differentiate? well, okay. So an easy way to, do, to know a Ponzi scheme is that there is no underlying asset. Right, a Ponzi scheme is any scheme that it pays people off. Um, it pays their it's the so-called investors by uh, collecting money from other people. So there's actually no event. There's no. There's there's no. There's nothing that the company you know, or the the scheme is actually investing in to get that return. So that's how you watch for a Ponzi scheme. How yeah, your money is um, increasing. You're going to give me back ten percent. How? Or you're going to give me back 50%. How? How am I going to get that 50? You need to ask questions. I know that you know there's a there's a um, you know there's because of the state of the economy, especially here in Nigeria, you know, we really want to break out of that poverty chain, but we also have to be very, very aware. I probably should have talked about it, you know, because there's actually that rise of Ponzi yeah. scheme. People say yeah. they will give you this return, they'll give you that return. Please be aware of those. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that um well, I'm actually saying it. Please be aware <laughs> of that, you know, please be aware of those schemes that will say they are returning. You need to ask questions. As an investor, you need to understand. I, I just told you how you can, like maybe for instance, investing in shares. There are people, there are regulators. There's the NSC, there's this, 
um, Securities and Exchange Commission, you go to their website, type, type this check for, okay, so I'm a, this guy says it's a stock broken check. Is it a verified stock? There are ways, there are checks and balances. Don't just take anything that people say just because of the return. Okay, if you're going to give me so and so, what are you going to do with my money that will make you to be able to give me that money? Are you only going to get the money from collect, collecting the money from another person? So not as if you've invested in anything. You are just going to collect another person and then for sure, the end, the end result of any Ponzi scheme is that it will crash. Except if you yeah. know with your eyes, you know that. Yeah. It, I know it will crash, but maybe not now. You know, now one you know, you know. Most times when it, it is too good to be true, it is too good. That's the rule of thumb. When you hear an outrageous return, just know that if it's too good to be true, most times it is too good to be true. Okay, so Rodiat asks, what book will you recommend for us to understand stocks better? Um... <laughs> There are so many books. I think there are, well, personally, it, for me, it has been more of an educative line that I have told and also practical line. Um, I didn't learn about stocks. I learned about stocks practically, not really by reading books. But I'm sure that if you Google, you'll be able to find some top books that people are recommending. But personally, I didn't, what I know about stocks and the stock market, I learned it practical experience and also from academic experience. I told you about um, some of my qualifications earlier. Not okay. from really <laughs> well, you can read this by Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett has actually written a few books on investing. I mean if there's anybody that you can you should you should listen to when he talks about stocks, it's him because that's where he made his money. He should he's, he's like the um, alpha you know, in the market and industry. So you can, you may want to look up, you want, may want to check um, Warren Buffett and the books that he has written. Okay, so I just want to apologize before we go further. We're running um, late because we have to get our questions answered. So I just okay. want to address that, that we're going ahead of time. Well, I'll be making sure not to ask the same question twice, but if your question has to not be answered, please stay on. If you still have questions to ask, I'm sorry, maybe you can message Florence later, but I'll just take the questions that are here for time's sake, because I know we have things to do. So the next question, are there is there a possibility that there can be falsified claims of sales of my stock without the company giving me my proceeds? So someone is asking, can the company say my, stock, my stocks have been sold without giving me the proceeds of it? And if there is, what would you advise okay. me? Okay, um, so that's why I, I did mention that if you know, if you before you pick any stock broken house, you have to actually be sure. I don't know if it's possible that um, maybe a company would just you know put a, put up a front and say there is stock broken house. It's possible, you know, people are funny; they can do different things. But you can always do your own um, check. The internet is free. You check the websites of the regulators. Check the company name. You can if because they'll have the list. Like in Securities and Exchange Commission, we have a list of um, stock brokers. So if you see that the name is there, then you can be sure. You can even call. You can actually call. Those things are actually, you can actually make those inquiries yourself. Yeah. And if if you are in, a, unfortunately, somebody that has happened to you, then re report the, uh, to the, to the line, the, the number on the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, the website. Just report. And that's what you can do. Okay. Well, Hossa asks, how do you opt to be a preference shareholder rather than an ordinary shareholder when buying stocks? Okay. It's not actually something that you opt to. It's actually the company that would decide that, okay, they are offering um, this preference. It's not something that you now opt to. So that's, um, it's the company that actually makes that decision and usually comes with conditions like the amount of money that you should Best. The price of the preference shareholders are also different. The, the price of the stocks of those shares are also different. So yeah, that's how that's how it works. So most times, most okay. and often, most times are very ordinary shares. Most times. Mm. Okay. So Flourish asks, are there stocks that don't give dividends? Yes, there are stocks that don't pay dividends. Like um, they call them growth stocks. 
you know, um, as, you know, there's some, if it's a new company, if it's a growing company now, for instance, um, you don't expect a growing company to start paying dividends all the time. Most likely, most likely what a growing company would do, even when they make profit, is that they would reinvest. They call it retained earnings. Whatever profit that they've made, you know, from doing business, they would reinvest it into the company to keep, to keep uh, increasing and keep being strong. Most times companies that pay dividends are actually older companies, companies that have been there for a while, you know, established companies. And all that. So yes, there are companies that may not always pay dividends, but that doesn't mean that they are less. Um, so those are actually growth stocks. Most times where how you would benefit or get gain from that, those kind of stocks is from that capital appreciation because they have been reinvesting their dividends. Most likely, you know, they would, the price of those stocks will actually go and you keep growing and growing. And so if you believe in such in a company like that, let's say a telecoms company or an ICT company or an e-commerce company, it's just coming out, it's releases its IPO, you'll be patient and wait for like maybe five years, 10 years, you know, when it gets established, you know, you will understand that you'll be very happy, you know, the dividend that hits your market. Even before that time, so by the, the price, of the shares that will make you very happy for waiting and for believing in them. So yeah, there are. Okay. So um, finance boss babe, I like your name by the way, finance boss babe. Um, she asks buying stocks when they are low. So I bought MTN stocks when it was one seventy. Now it's higher than that, and I want to buy. How will I know the new low when the price is high already for me? That's a good question. Um, so, well, you know, the new low, basically from like, his, from looking at the history of the price, you know, of the price of that particular share. Um, it's possible for, you know, I told you that the prices of shares go in circles. It's possible for the price to, the price of a particular share to break that circle and then get into another circle. It's, it is possible, but most, most, most times it's actually a circle. You know, from the his, from the history, the short history, MTN shares, they just they're not up to two years, I think, just about two years. So it is not enough time. But then from that short period of time, you, I know that MTN is, get, is going for like 181 naira. So that's pretty high. You know, you may choose to just wait a bit, um, wait for the price of the of the shares to actually still come down. Mm. You know. Wait for the price to, to come down before you actually go back into the market again. Except if you're targeting the dividend, because you know very soon to be dividend season, you want to buy shares because of the dividends that you're going to receive. So yeah, knowing the the, the, the low of a company is just by watching its historical price and its circle. That's how you know whether this is high or this is actually low now or it's with, just by looking at the history of that particular stock. Okay, so Daniela asks, right, um, what investment vehicle is best for someone just starting out and someone who doesn't have a lot of money to diversify? Okay, um, so remember I already said that you, it doesn't mean that you have to have so much money if you want to diversify, you could actually stick things in bits, right? You can actually start in bits, but if you, if you, um, if you want to, you want to already have the advantage of diversification acts upon starting, then you would go for mutual funds. You go for an equity um, investment or a balanced fund that has some equities and other things. That's how, that's the best, that's your easiest bet if you want to start with small money and then yet enjoy the benefits of diversification is by a mutual fund. Yeah, okay. So Flourish asks, what is mutual fund exactly? Okay, so mutual fund is um, and is is a type is an investment vehicle, right? Is a way you can invest as an investor. Um, by how how it works is that it it um, takes money from retail invest investors. Retail investors are like people like you and me, not institutional, not um, comp companies or company investors or big time investors. It takes their funds, they are 5,000 here, they are 1,000 there, 2,000, 3,000, sums it up into a pool of money. And with that, you, it, you will be able to invest in, like maybe say treasury 
bills. Treasury bills, we hear that, you, you know, treasury bills, if you want to invest in treasury bills directly um, from the CBN, it's, up, it's 50 million and 1,000. Now, an individual may not have 50 million and 1,000, but you can invest in a mutual fund. That mutual fund will eventually take all those sums of money and invest in treasury bills, invest in all those other things. So that's those are mutual funds. Mutual funds are just like name mutual, mutual from different invest individual or private um, mm -hmm. um, retail investors, mm -hmm. and then the fund is being collated and used to invest in different things like equities, like fixed income, like this and that. So that's what that's what it is. So it's like so when I said you and all your brothers and sisters. Okay, sorry. I was going to say that it's like when you and all your brothers and sisters join money together to buy your mommy a present yes. because one person cannot buy exactly. it alone. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Those are that my makes friends. sense. Yeah. Um, so you are going to say something before I ask the next question. Yeah, I was going to say that our asset management companies usually have um mutual mutual funds. Funds, so any asset money. Okay. Mm. So Naomi says, hi yeah, everyone. Lovely presentation so far. Does FSDH focus on stocks resident in Nigerian companies only, or is your company portfolio internationally diverse? For now, um, the stocks that we trade at FSDH are Nigerian stocks. Yes, that's what we do. By the way, FSDH, we also have mutual funds. We have the balance fund. If you want to invest in um like the equities and other fixed income and all of that if you want to invest in strictly fixed income funds we also have that and all that so if you're looking for a place to invest if you are need funds if you want to invest in mutual funds you can you can just google it fsdh and then you'll be able to invest yeah somebody will be able to assist you with that okay so someone asks um does stock trading happen all online does all stock trading happen online Okay, like here in Nigeria, uh, um, it happens on the floor of the exchange and usually it's been done by brokers. It's been done by brokers. Um, I know that some stockbroking companies actually have apps which you can just uh, make a request. You know, it's at the end of the day, it's not actually you that is going to buy those shares. It's your stockbroker that will make those trades for you. But then with those, it, it just helps you to be able to pick out the stocks yourself that you want to invest. So yes, it's, it's actually um, it's actually online. It's not something that you, you would go physically or something to go and invest. You know, you, you would invest here and then you invest through your broker. And then outside the country, I know that there are robo advisors and all of that. There are different apps that you can even invest directly outside the country, you can actually invest directly. Some companies would actually allow you to buy the stocks without necessarily using a broker. But here in Nigeria, it's um, it's through your broker. Even if you're going to get an app that you will be able to trade, it's, it's most likely an app of your stockbroking firm where you'll be able to do those trades. So someone asked a question that I'm very interested in, which is what I was laughing before. She asked, <laughs> How do you identify a fake stock broker? I want to know the answer to that question. How do you identify so a simple, fake yeah. stock broker? <laughs> you know, so they, they, they say from them. Uh, yes, so shame them. So ask them what company, where do you work? <laughs> and they say they work, they tell you the name of the company. You Google it up on the um, on security and exchange for whether it's a valid company or not. And then if they see, if you, in case they are, they, are, they are using the name of a very com popular company, ask them for their ID card. Don't just give them the money. Are, it has to be proof right now. They, you know, if you don't give them the money, most times, ah, we pass that age, oh, you can't give somebody money to go and do so. No, no, no. Please don't do that at all. If, even if, um, let's say, those um, stock broke, some oh, stockbroking wow. firms have like in their market. Can you hear me now? Can you guys hear me? Hello? Let's know what we are doing well and what can you, you guys want. hear me? Um, yes, we can hear you now. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, you can go on. 
Okay, so what I was saying is that you check your the, the Security and Exchange Commission's the sites. They say they're working for a particular company. You check the sites and if you can see the company there, okay, let them show you some proof that they work there in case they are using, um, they're just using a name, like say I work at FSDH, where's the proof, where's your ID card? And besides, there is no stock booking firm that will ask you to pay the, an individual money. You know, no, 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 no stock broking firm will ask you to do that. Even if you want to make some payment, you pay it into the account, a bank account. That would definitely have the name of the company that they are proposing to be. So we have passed that era of giving people, nobody does that, giving people cash or something like that. So please just avoid that. There should be, if any, any person says they're working in a stock mm -hmm. company, they should be able to have proof that they work there everything you should be able to fill a form there will be an email correspondence to you telling you you have filled the form talking about your portfolio stop working companies every supporting company actually even sends you weekly um emails so telling you giving you stock recommendations this you can buy this stuff you can buy, buy this stuff they give you so you would definitely know when you are working for a real um stop working I don't okay, know. Can so, you, are you there? Can you guys hear me? <laughs> yes, I'm here. So Rodiat asks again. She asks uh, another question that I'm interested in. She says, "When I, whenever I see the stock market, I get confused with the red and green symbols used. Can you please explain what these signs mean?" Oh, okay. So <laughs> you know, red naturally means you know there's danger or something. When there's a negative. Maybe there's a maybe the price of a particular share it it has decreased in in the price. Maybe it was ten naira yesterday, today is so they usually use red to show that there's a decrease or you know green when there's an appreciation in the price when the price has increased. Yeah. Okay. So if Etola asks, how does one predict the companies that are not going to fail in the future? And what websites can I get the fundamentals and information of a particular company I want to invest in? Okay, so like I mentioned, you know, there are things that you can look out for. As I mentioned um, if the company has been actually doing, performing very well. And then, you know, once you have stocks, it's good for you to be uh, economically aware. Um, at least you'll be, uh, you'll be aware of your economy, you'll be aware of the macroeconomic conditions of your economy. I did mention that um, most of broking firms actually send um, recommendations, you know, every every week. If you have a good stock broking firm, they won't tell you things that are happening, things that are going on. You know, there are weekly newsletters. So you could just read those letters and then that would may help you to even have a sense, a feel of what's going on. It just helps you to become educated, um, you know, about what's going on in your company. In the in your environment in your in your economy, um, yeah. So yeah. So like I I did mention the products, um, you know, having good experience, um, you know, having to the with to the test of time. Those are good indicators that you want to make you believe that I um, talked about. You know, if a particular sector is thriving now, like now, you know that the work from home. You and I were using data now, although I don't know why my data has been. Embarrassing me. <laughs> so, but where you at work from home has definitely, you know, it has increased the um, consumption, you know, of data, and you, you just you just expect that, um, you know, the, the ICT companies will be doing well, you know, and all of that. And then it's not all. Nobody is actually a monopoly of knowledge. It's actually just reading, asking your stockbroker questions. Most times, if you most likely if you open a stockbroking account, there will be an account officer. You can ask your stock your account officer questions. You want to know they send you information too so it's a gradual thing you just keep learning and learning and getting more comfortable okay so um someone asked the stock prices differ from country to country yes because the um, stock prices are actually the prices of um a particular a particular company's shares in the market and every company usually has their the shares traded in that particular company's stock exchange so yeah, it's not as if, like if I want to buy the shares of uh, maybe Apple now, I have to go through the New York Stock Exchange, not Nigerian Stock yeah. Exchange now. So the stock exchange of your company will, it will, it will be trading 
shares of companies that are incorporated you know, in Nigeria, that are domiciled in Nigeria. Okay, so if Etola and Kendi ask, where can I find a reputable and trusted stockbroking company? Can you recommend any? I can recommend FSDH Securities, that's where I work. So yeah, they are reputable, it's a big company. Yeah, it's a good company. That's so one. Chela, I hope I'm getting this right. Chela asks, are there any apps you can use for the Nigerian Stock Exchange? Apps. No, the apps come from, um, so an, the Nigeria Stock Exchange is a website. You just go to the website and find any information that you need, right? Hmm. So if you're thinking about app now, an app is basically the, comp is, is mostly companies now that would have an app for whatever purpose that they need, you know, whatever um, that would help their customers or their clients to be able to do one or two transactional, um, you know, to carry out one or two things. So that's an app, you know, but you're talking about Nigeria Stock Exchange. Nigeria Stock Exchange is a regulatory body. It's a, it's, you know, that it basically it, it regulates um, the stock exchange in Nigeria. So the stock exchange is a marketplace where the stock is being traded, stock exchange. So where, where stocks are being traded. So the one for Nigeria, you know, is the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So and, and if you go to the website of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, you can find information about stocks that are being traded and all of that and all that. But if you're talking about app now, you're talking about maybe a company's app, like maybe a stock broker company that is under the Nigerian Stock Exchange. It has an app that will maybe allow you to buy shares through them, you know, and all that. Yeah. Okay, so Vivian asks. For foreign stocks, do you advise I wait and get money for a unit stock? Like I know Tesla is over 600K or can I buy like a fraction and continue until I have a full stock? Okay, so now it depends on the, hey, can you hear me? Okay, I thought my network froze. So it depends on the, um, the vehicle or the medium which you want to use to buy those stock, foreign stocks. You know, um, I know that there are some uh, stock brokers, some firms that have broken into Nigeria market that allow you to actually trade and buy those stocks, and they will allow you buy you know macro units of those shares. So they have a way that they break it in. So if you're using, if you if you are on a platform that will allow you to buy um, maybe a, a percentage or a fraction of a, a unit. Well, good for you. As long as you have tested and you're sure that that um, vehicle or that um, the, the, the platform is actually a valid one and they're actually buying those shares, you know, you have to also do your groundwork, you know, make sure you do your groundwork to make sure that you're actually getting the real deal. Yeah, okay, so, so it's possible. Some companies, I know that some... Um, oh, sorry, go on. No, it's fine. I said, I was saying that I know that um, some foreign companies have tried to break into the Nigerian market. Yeah, yeah. So someone asked, is there an age restriction on investors? What if I'm 17 years old? Uh, okay. Um, so if you are 17 years old, you're a minor. So your, your, um, your guardian can actually open the stock for you in your name. You know, we have people that are some parents actually started up start buying shares for their children, you know, from from when they were little babies. So you just buy it in their name, and then when they now become of age, when they become eighteen, you can now transfer the the shares. You now transfer it such that you, it's not no, no longer the parent that is operating the account. It is now you know the real owner, the ward that is operating the account. So yes, it's it's actually very possible for you to. There's no age restriction. A parent can open the, um, a stock working account for an infant and start buying shares on their on the person's behalf. When the infant goes of age, the person starts handling the account. It's just that the parents will be managing the account up until the um, person comes of age. Hmm. Someone asks, um, do we have, Ka Kalim asks, do we have in index funds, ETFs in the Nigerian capital market? Yes, we actually do. We have we do we have um, ETFs. We have ETP, We have ETPs. Exchange product. Exchange traded products. 
in the Nigerian uh, market. You can actually buy, there are some companies that actually have their own ETFs. I know that Vetiva has, um, just, you know what, all this information I'm asking you, the Nigerian Stock Exchange, you see there. You, we do have exchange traded products. Um, Vetiva has one, um, Mary Stem, I think they also have an ETF. Yeah, Mary Stem has ETF. Okay. Yeah, we do. Hmm. So Ufia asks, how can please can you mention the sites we can use to monitor the stock prices and purchase stocks? Um, is the Nigerian Stock Exchange everything is there? You just go when you get to the Nigerian Stock the website. Um, you go to the equity section. When you click on equities, it shows you. Um, you know the a page comes up which you can check if you are looking for any particular um, any particular share price you type it in and then it comes out it you would see the price especially if you close because the market closes at 2 30 on a weekday so let's say anything from 3 p.m on all of that you would see the price at which it closed at today the price at which it was yesterday the price at which it opened up there's a lot of information you, if you click on that share, that's where you can now even find, when I was talking about the liquidity of a share, you find out the number of trades, the amount of, the volume of, you know, shares that, there's all that information, you find it out on the website for the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Okay, so I have two FSDH related questions. So I'll just ask them at once. Progress asks, does FSDH have an app? And Omotolani asks, What's the lowest amount someone can use to start buying stocks with FSDH? Say if I have 500,000, can I start? Yes, you can. You can start with um, 500,000, start buying shares. The lowest, the lowest amount, I think it's 100,000. If you want to buy through our mutual, if you want to come in through our mutual funds, it's even much less than that. But if you want to buy your shares personally in your name, um, so 100,000 Naira. Um, yeah, so with your 500,000 Naira, you'll be able to um, buy your shares. You would also have access to um, accounts of officers that will give you advice, you know, you know, questions like, okay, which share should I buy? What time should I buy it? And all of that. You have all that. I will be able to advise you on what shares to buy and when to buy them. So does FSDH have an hour? <laughs> Oh yes, we do. We have an app. Our securities um, have an app. We do. Okay. So Ohosa asks, I want to move my stocks between, I want to move my shares between stock broke houses. What is the best way to go about it? Um, I do sell my shares and rebuy at the new stock broken house, or can I transfer? You would transfer, you would um so there are some forms that you feel you, you speak to, you can first you speak to the stock broken house which you want to transfer to. So they will send you some forms, they'll send you transfer forms and all of that. So the transfer forms you fill it, there are some that go to the your old stock broken house, that's the house that you want to give you tell instructing them to try move your shares to the new one. Uh, and then there are some that go to also CSCS and just letting them know. So there's a procedure. You just ask whatever stock broken firm that you want to move to, ask them, they'll send you the forms, you fill it, and it's, it's actually just easy. You just transfer your shares. You can always transfer from one stock broken house to another easily. So I'm going to finish with the question we all want an answer to. Can you be our coach on this investing and stock broken journey? Um, who asked that? <laughs> Daniela, Daniela, one bottle of Coke or Fanta, whichever <laughs> for you, because we all want that. We all want that answer. So, Florence, can you be our coach, our mentor, our person <laughs> on this journey? Yes, I, I would love to. I mean, I I love um teaching people. Oops, I was thinking like, I love um I love it. I told I I think I mentioned it that I love. Because there's a knowledge gap, and I know that people are thirsty for it, so I'm I'm passionate about it. I would love to. That's that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Florence. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Just Florence, some love in the comments. I know you all had a great session. I had a wonderful session. This was Thank so amazing. Thank you for staying. Thank you for your okay. patience. <laughs> The recording will be available for everyone to access. Also, um, the guide will also be available for you to read. So if you missed out on some part of the session, 
you'll be able to rewatch it or read the guide. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Florence, for educating us today. I learned a lot today. I learned so much, and I'm so glad that you came on board. My pleasure. With us. We hope that later in future, we'll keep learning more from you. Oh, and we'll oh, that. I'm so glad that you are glad. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am very glad. So thank you everyone for showing up. This was such a nice time. Mm -hmm. We have a survey that is going to come up when you leave the session. Please fill the survey to let us know how you feel about this session. If you enjoyed the session, what you took away, please fill it so that we can create better sessions for you and we can cater to what you want to learn. So thank you everyone. Thank you for staying over the time. Thank you for being such good sports and say thank you to Florence. Florence, before you go, they are wondering how they can reach you. Um, so do you have like a Facebook, Instagram, email? How can they, okay. how can they contact you? <laughs> okay, so my Instagram um, handle is F Zolamos, I don't know. Um, F hmm. Zolamos. <laughs> and then, okay, my email address, I think email is good. Okay. Um, email is florencewarikam at gmail.com. So, yeah, okay. my name is already this. So, it's okay. florencewarikam at gmail.com. Okay. So, please yeah. message Florence with her email. And I'm sure she will give you a response because she's, she's our new coach here. So yes, she will definitely give you a response. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Tomorrow is Friday. And this is salary week. All that you have learned here today, don't carry all your salary money. I'm going to use it to buy a shawarma when there are stocks to buy. I want every time you think of shawarma now, you think of stocks. So don't ah, carry don't buy shawarma. <laughs> buy shawarma, but don't spend all your money on shawarma. <laughs> if not, you just see Florence at the shower spot looking at you. I'm telling you, my face just be like. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a good day. And we'll yeah. see you in the next session that we have. My name is Ifoma from Chile's Africa and our host is Florence Warikam. Bye everyone. Please don't forget to fill the survey. Bye. It's up on the screen. Please fill it so that we can, you know, create better sessions for you. So everyone say bye to Florence. Bye, Florence. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm going to end the session now.